morning brewers, it's Saturday morning and brew day, always a good thing. Got the grandfather here just to my right mashing away, I'm doing another uh, single hop golden ale at around 4%, we're still exploring that 4% brewing. Mosaic this time, I've brewed a few single hop beers in my time. So uh, Cascade, Citra, Amarillo, Nelson Sauvin, now uh, Mosaic, I think it's a good way to find out and explore the hop characteristics, you know, flavour and aroma before you start combining them. Um, but the main thing I wanted to talk about in this uh, session was the Hop Rocket, which I've invested in. Uh, and it's going to be its maiden flight on this brew, so I'll show you how I get on with it. So the Hop Rocket is a hop back, and as you probably know, um, a hop back is a device for flowing hot water over hops uh, on the way to the chiller. Uh, so the hot water would come in our case from the grandfather into this inlet here, uh, up through the chamber which has been packed with hops out the top into your chiller. So why would you do that? Well it's, a, it's, a, it's an alternative to a hop stand. So um, uh, I've used hop stands quite a bit. The thing about a hop stand is that your yeah, hops are open to the air in the hot wort, and uh, that gives a chance for those aromatic oils to to evaporate and escape. Whereas with a hot back and a hot rocket, the the process is completely sealed. So your hot wort comes straight from your grandfather at the end of boil into here, through the hops out the top straight into the counterflow chiller and that all that hopefully all that hoppy goodness is immediately locked in as the warts cool down to 20 degrees or however close you can get to fermentation temperature. So, so that's the idea. Um, hope, you know, the, the idea is to increase our chance you know, and get the best from our hops, get more hoppiness out. Um, I've not used it yet. So, uh, will the grandfather be able to cope with the extra resistance of a hot back on that little pump? Uh, I don't know. So, we're, we're going to find out. Um, so, later on, I'll connect it up and uh, we'll charge this with the charge of hops uh, and see what happens when we get into the chill phase. So, let's have a look at the hot rocket then. So, it's made by Blickman. It's a pretty hefty you know, industrial looking unit complements the grandfather quite nicely actually. Um, it's sealed with this T-bar. So let's take that off. And then take the bottom out. First thing you'll notice is this conical arrangement and this plate. So that sits above the inlet, if you could imagine that it's fitted, which means the, beer, the hot water comes into the inlet. And the job of this plate, it's a bit like the sparge plate on the grandfather, is to make sure that the water flows up evenly through the, um, through the hot rocket, rather than finding a channel through the hops, which wouldn't really get the best out of your hot charge. And this is the seal that keeps the whole unit sealed. And then inside, This out, there's a another chamber. So we've got a per fine perforated plate here, perforation is about the same as the grandfather um, pump filter, a sort of uh, wiper seal around the outside there, and this cage. And the cage isn't where you put the hops, the hops go around this and the job of the cage is to increase the surface area for flow. So it increases the flow capability of the unit. Yeah, that's, that's what that's there for. Um, you can use this as a hot back or a randomizer. If you're using it as a randomizer, you can take this off. Uh, but they recommend that you leave this in if you're using it for, for a hot back. Uh, and then we're just left with the empty uh, hot rocket hot back unit itself. So that's, um, that's it really, quite a simple device, really impressed with this, very nicely made, really heavy unit, I can see you're getting a lot of uh, use out of it. So having, so what happens is this goes in, 
and the hops go in and the back goes on. I'll, I'll charge it up later and show you me filling it up. Um, so then I had to work out how to connect it to the to the grandfather. Um, and that was with a couple of Blickman Quick Connects. So it goes in between the chiller uh, and the grandfather. So it'll connect like this. The outlet's at the top. And that goes on there. And the inlet's at the bottom. And that's so that the wart comes in and expunges the air as it rises. So then you've got a, an airless and sealed system. So it'll connect like that, and here's my normal grandfather uh, connector and that'll go onto the rise tube from the pump. Out of the pump, through the hot rocket, into the chiller, out. Um, so we're going to try that later and see, see if it works, see if the, the pump can cope with that flow. If it can't, then I've got a randomizer and a hot back, I suppose. Um, one thing I had to solve was how to take it out. I don't want the hot rocket in all the time, so I don't always use a hot stand or a hot back. And also I don't want it in when I'm when I'm doing the um, sterilization circulation, you know, the first five minutes, because the whole idea is that we lock that hoppy goodness in. So I don't want the hot rocket in circulating back into the boiler for five minutes. It defeats the point really. So that caused a bit of head scratching and the supplier really didn't have many ideas. But I think I found a solution. Good old eBay, which is this. This is a male to male connector of the same thread. So when I don't want the hot rocket in place because I'm doing the sanitising circulation for the first five minutes or I'm just not using it. I'll just connect these together like that. Now I've got a slightly longer run, I realise, than I did have before, but uh, that looks like quite a neat solution to taking it out, so that's how I'll be trying it today. So connect it like that, do the sterilising run, stop it, put the hot rocket in, start again and hopefully do the, do the hot back chilling straight to the fermenter. So advantages, um, said, said to give, give you, you know, the, the lock in that uh, hoppiness, so that's the advantage, the main advantage of it. Other advantages, uh, you are passing it through the um, hop back at the same time as you're chilling, so unlike with a hop stand, you're not putting the hops in and waiting, so it speeds up your uh, process a bit because you are uh, doing your hop stand in effect and chilling at the same time. It uh, acts as a secondary filter, so the hops in there will filter out and you know, it might end up with slightly brighter beer in your fermenter uh, than you did before. Um, so there are the pluses, minuses, you've got to buy it, get another device to clean up, although you've got less hops in the, in the, um, in the boiler, <clears throat> so that's a plus. We don't know if it will work yet, but we're about to find out. Um, uh, so that's that. I'm hoping as well it might be a bit more controlled than a hop stand. The thing that strikes me about the hop stand is the hops are in there for as long as it takes you to chill and that can vary a bit. Now I know that speed of chilling might vary with the hop rocket as well. But it seems to me that you know the, the volume of beer passes over the hops once and that's it always. So maybe it would be a bit more controlled as well. Uh, but, but we'll see about that. Um, so that's the, that's the hop rocket. I'm going to finish my uh, mash now, I'm about halfway into that, um, and then I'll be back, show you filling it up with hops, connecting it up, this will all be pre-sanitised, pre and then we'll connect her up and see what happens. Right, fingers crossed, see you later.
Okay, the boil's uh, the boil's underway. I put my first hops in, so let's get the um, hop rocket ready. So I've sanitised it, star sand. That uh, chamber's a lot easier to get in. The sun's moved around now, as you can see. I hope this is going to show up okay. Um, I've got my hops here. I'm trying full 80 gram charge. It'll take 82 grams of hops maximum. So I thought, well, let's try the maximum. I don't know. I'll always use that amount, but let's push it to the limit, see if the going farther can cope. So I'm loading the hops in around that flow chamber in there. I'm not packing them. I'll fluff them up a bit, you don't want them in a big block, you want the water to be able to flow around and through them. So they've gone in, that's 80 grams of mosaic, they've gone in quite easily, as you can see there. You can only use leaf hops, you can't use um, pellet hops. They're just too fine and they'll get through and into your wart. So you put that seal on there, put the bottom on like that, put the sealing strap on, make sure it's burned already, make sure the sealing T bar is not too close to the pipe connectors, otherwise they get in the way. T bar on. Seal it up. Now this thing's rated to 40 psi, and the reason for that, I imagine, is not. I don't think it needs to be that high to keep the liquid in. It's because you can use it as a randalizer. So a randalizer is same idea, but you connect it into your um, dispensing line. Yeah, between your keg and your tap, so that you can flow your beer over fresh hops, and that's why it's rated to. Uh, uh, yeah, 40 psi. So I quite fancy trying that, but my main purpose is to use it as a hot back. So that's it. Uh, it's ready to go. I'm gonna. First of all, I'll be connecting this in to um, sterilise the whole counterflow chiller. Then I'll put the hot rocket in. Full charge of hops at 80. You can go to 82. That's three ounces in old money. Uh, and we'll see how she does. Okay. So I'll be back when the boil's over and we're ready to ready to play with it. See you in a bit. <laughs> 